Hello, I would like to introduce Marian Mernik, who uh, talked about domain specific languages today. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Marian Mernik. I'm a professor at the University of Maribor, uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And today, my invited talk was about domain specific languages, um, systematic mapping studies on domain specific languages. And particularly, we were interested. Uh, what kind of research uh, researchers in this area are doing um, and uh, the aim was to find uh, possible gaps in this research to find the uh, future work. Right, so um, what I wanted to ask you first is uh, after you did all that research, um, do you see any specific domains that are more likely to, 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 to implement DSL there? Uh, or is it something like uh, a more global uh, trend right now? <coughs> I would say it's more global trend, but uh, definitely I can say that the, some applications domains where uh, DSL development is very uh, uh, flourishing, uh, for example, robotics and then uh, automobile industry, uh, <coughs> they are mainly using um, modeling languages, and also these uh, uh, very popular cyber-physical uh, systems. Uh, <coughs> this is a multi-paradigm approach. Um, it's a very complex approach. It's like we heard yesterday from the invited talk uh, uh, about uh, smart uh, electrical grids. Uh, there are different uh, views uh, uh, on this problem, and if each view uh, needs to be specified with their own uh, domain-specific modeling language and uh, the challenge is, challenge is how these different m models then uh, collaborate, cooperate, uh, some are continuous, some are discrete and so on. Okay. Um, you also said that it is very, very important in DSLs uh, that the language is very easy to use for um, I don't know if I should say programmer, I think it's the user, right? So how to achieve that? What should we focus on? Yes, uh, domain-specific languages uh, are languages uh, for end users, and so uh, they are not programmers. Uh, and the key here is that we are using notations from this domain. So notation abstractions which are already exist in this domain, and end user needs to be familiar with these uh, concepts. So, uh, first uh, thing is that we need to use these terminology concepts uh, from the domain and the other thing is that we need to include end users into development of DSLs. So, end users need to say, okay, this syntax is good, uh, this one has some limitations, I don't like this kind, uh, how to express this uh, problem in this way. Uh, so, the key is that we are including end users into DSL development. Okay, and in the end, you get something like a, a framework, uh, right, that will support uh, programming in a specific field, right? That's, that's right, yeah. The final goal is that we develop a DSL, um, which is very uh, specific for this application domain, and that uh, even end users can, uh, can use it. And uh, I can imagine for example, uh, nowadays are very popular uh, smart homes, smart cities, uh, that uh, the, uh, the owner, the house owner, will be able to specify uh, how this smart house should operate with some uh, domain-specific language. Okay, so um, I think that maybe not today, but in a few steps, we're ahead, we are going into the direction, if I, if I get it right, uh, that um, we are trying or we are facing a situation when we are hiding code in a programming language from the eyes of, uh, let's, let's call it a programmer, I mean, in, of course, in, you know, someone who is going to create a program is going not to see the code itself because it's going to become more and more easy to use. So this will mean that the code eventually one day is going to be hidden as it as it got in <coughs> other solutions uh, yeah you need to understand that <coughs> from these dsl programs which are very small usually 
uh, real code G, uh, written in GPL is going to be generated. So, and then we don't want to see uh, generated code. We don't want to maintain generated code because then we have the same problems as before. Uh, it's going to be a huge amount of code generated, automatically generated, but we want to uh, not deal with this generated code. We want to deal with uh, uh, input, that is the DSL programs, models, uh, and uh, because they are, will be, are going to be uh, smaller, shorter, um, then it's uh, manageable to, to handle them. Yeah, so it's simple language to create the actual code behind after yeah. processing, yeah. right. Um, okay, so um, uh, one more thing, one quite recently, um, there was an experiment that ended up in uh, artificial intelligence that created its own DSL, which was totally un understandable for uh, for human. And w the problem that I can see is that if we one day decide to make something normal, I would say about it, that um, software is generating it, its own DSLs, um, isn't there a risk that's we are going to to lose control over software that is going to be created in this way. Yes, this is um, a really a hard question. So it's, we need to do some predictions. But first, uh, nowadays um, code uh, DSL and GPL code is not only for the computers; it's, on, it's also for the programmers. So program end user programmers are using this code. Uh, the example which we discussed during the invited talk was that um, DSL was uh, designed and developed by, by, by machine, by robot. And uh, in this case, probably we don't need to understand the, the program. We just need to see the, the final results, um, which was the auctions. Uh, uh <coughs> but uh, yeah, it really uh, might be a problem that we are not handling anymore uh, this process because uh, if this is going to be done by machines, it might be problematic. Yeah? We, need to, we, need to, we need to trust uh, the, the machine. Yeah, because if we cannot understand the semantics of the code, if we cannot control the code, what it actually does, what's in the inside of the engine, yeah. yeah. Uh, we will understand the results, uh, which is some kind of optimization of the auctions and so on. But uh, we don't know, we will not know how this is realized. Uh, uh, something is going wrong, we cannot fix it. And th the main question there would be, uh, will we be able to switch it off? If we don't know all, you know, all the procedures, all the um, tags, whatever, how, it, how the language works, can we be, um, will we be able to put a request to, to, to the program? Okay, now you should just switch yeah. off. Uh, that's, I think it's problem, a little broader problem, uh, pro problem of the super intelligence. Someone predicts that um, these super intelligence uh, machines, algorithms behind the machines will prevail. So, um, and this is going to be the end of the humanity. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, it's really going in this direction, but um, this is the broader problem of super intelligence, which might start control our lives. Well, yeah, this is another risk because at the moment I was not thinking even about something that is that super intelligence, uh, but I was rather thinking about very simple thing. If we want to. Uh, if we want to ask a program to do something specific, we have to ask very specifically. So <coughs> if we don't know that specific uh, procedure, if we don't know the specific... Um, yeah, but the question was if we will be able to stop this uh, malfunctioning program or, or, or something else, but the real question is if this super intelligence will allow us to, mm -hmm. to, to shut down the, 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 the machine, because he, super intelligence will understand what we, try to do and uh, so uh, uh, I really hope that this is not going to happen very soon so yeah the, well I understand it and I treat it as level two but before that we'll have that level one which 
which was, uh, um, I think, which happened during the experiment, which I, which I was referring. They, ju they just switched off everything. But um, if something like this happens on a really distributed system, where you cannot just switch off everything, um, there might be a problem, mm -hmm. right? I agree. So um, I still prefer the, the uh, situation today that we are controlling the machines, not the otherwise. So. Okay. So thank you for conversation.